if you're an anti-vaxxer, just stop being a fucking moron and get the vaccine. The side effects are better than dying and killing people you care about. That's the, that's the non-gaming side of this. my booster i feel like shit so francesco's doing everything today okay yeah yeah it's all Fran- it's the francesco show until i start okay. moaning about something i'll rant because... i'll make the rants too this time no no i don't think i'll be ranting i don't know. i think that's still my part that's still my part <laughs> oh fuck me. yeah i might be having side effects of the vaccine but if you're an anti-vaxxer just Stop being a fucking moron and get the vaccine. The side effects are better than dying and killing people you care about. And that's the that's the non gaming side of this. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got Francesco again. Hello. And Alessio. Yo. Still not showing his face. Uh, One day. One day. One day. So we've got a few topics today. Uh, a big variety, just in general. Never really big news. Uh, well, major. Yeah, big stuff. Words. We've got Lionhead, Microsoft admitting that they fucked up with Lionhead, which I've been saying for long enough, so it's nice to actually hear that I'm right. <laughs> uh, Rumours of the bully. Yeah, I didn't mind bully. We've got Stalker being, well... That's going to be my rant, probably. No, probably not. They've backtracked very quickly. Ubisoft are... Now, this... I, I, I'm i still not sure this is real. They're not releasing... They're not making something open world. Now, that's just scary to me, so... I, I think we've gone into opposite world. <laughs> um, Turtle Rock have been bought, and then some Final Fantasy stuff. Like, multiple stuff, all quick and yeah, easy. Yeah. The first one, <laughs> uh, first one, Lionhead. Uh, go on, Ooh. Alessio. I I know I'd read this before as well, but you've you've covered it on the site, so Take yeah, away. yeah. Well, uh, it's been a while, of course. Yeah. It's been uh, roughly five years uh, and some since the cl- sudden closure of Lionhead, and of course it was. It was a big studio. Um, you know, it had been uh, around for almost 20 years when it closed, and uh, it made some beloved franchises like uh, Black and White, which uh, I guess you loved, Chris, because it was also kind of a, you know, a god uh, game take on RTS mm-hmm. game. And also Fable, of course. Like Black and White. I really did like Black and White. And uh, yeah, as we all know, Microsoft uh, basically closed them down and uh, also cancelled the Fable Legends, which was, you know, <laughs> an entirely different take on Fable. It was a four versus one uh, multiplayer game, uh, asymmetrical, where basically one player would would play basically the Dungeon Master, so it sent the minions against the other four players uh, because you know that was the odd thing back then with the evolve and other such titles but of course uh, this game didn't really <laughs> didn't really even launch it was just in beta mm. and uh, eventually microsoft uh, pu- pulled the plug and uh, you know they <laughs> pretty much laid everyone off and of course it was it was very sad, and uh, now, finally, uh, as part of a, a series of documentaries that they've uh, put out recently, uh, as part of the 20th anniversary of Xbox, uh, they have finally admitted uh, they were uh, wrong to, cl- to close them, because uh, uh, actually... Uh, you know, yeah, Fable Legends was maybe the last straw, 
but uh, uh, actually Microsoft admitted that uh, uh, they were wrong uh, in uh, trying to force uh, developers like Lionhead to use the Kinect device, you know? For example, Fable Journey, uh, you know, was made with that in mind, and of course it never really took, as uh, Microsoft is now admitting, and, uh, you know, it, it is it is good because, uh, of course, I wish Lionhead was still here, uh, but uh, uh, I can see the progress that Microsoft has made since then in how they are dealing with their own developers. Uh, you know, even Phil Spencer himself said, you know, you you acquire a studio for what they do best, not for, uh, you know, helping you do what you need. You know, what you want them so, to do, yeah. Exactly. So basically, in this case, Microsoft was uh, uh, kind of uh, using Lionhead and other developers to push the Kinect device, but uh, it never really took. And they basically ruined a bunch of developers in the process. Instead, they should have just left them to do what they did best, which was, you know, fable, regular fable games in this case. And uh, like I said, it, it seems like they they understand that now. Uh, uh, you know, every every developer they've acquired recently has been left to do what they've always been doing. Uh, so, you know, just with a bigger budget. So I guess uh, it is, of course, still sad that uh, Lionhead closed down, but. Uh, uh, you know, the silver lining is that uh, at least Microsoft learned something and, uh, well, there is still the new game, the new Fable game coming up from yeah. Playground. So fingers crossed that they can at least revive uh, the franchise. It's a weird one. It is a weird one. Um, yeah, same as you've said, and I've, been, I've said in the past, Microsoft just seemed like a company that, at the moment, sort of trust them to just let the developers do what the what the developers can do. I think they'll still interfere somewhat when it comes to such as three four three and Halo, but other than that, yeah, I think they're just letting the developers crack on. Um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was. I, I think I, I'm not I, that. I, I do- yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't know if I'm misre- misremembering, but I think Rare was in a similar position. They were using them to make Kinect games. Mm. And yeah, I, I don't think Rare has uh, ever recovered from that, even though they're still... Uh, you know, at least they're doing Seal Thieves, which is probably more in line with what they used to do. But I think they were in a similar position. They were just lucky they weren't the they ones were, yeah. getting... Uh, because they, it, yeah. it was the same. They were using them to, you know, they were doing things that probably weren't what they wanted to do in the first place. But yeah, yeah. maybe they're probably doing better now. CFTs is doing good. So they, yeah. Not... Yeah, like you said, like Alessio said, Microsoft has learned <clears throat> the lesson, at least. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it cost them a few developers, but well, at least we can say that they learned this lesson. Uh, faster than uh, maybe EA for example <laughs> they've still not learned the lesson they, yeah, they're not they learned it for a short well, amount of time and then they just forgot it again I just yeah it's just yeah. a vicious cycle I still remember when Rick Teller first took charge of EA and how we let well let developers make decent games again Dead Space Mirror's Edge, the yeah. developers could experiment and then suddenly that stopped again. De la vie. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's nice to... Microsoft is certainly... They know what they're doing at the moment. They're, I just hope they don't yeah. fall down that pitfall like every like they've all done before. And I'm not... The, the one thing is I'm not that fussed that Lionhead got shut down now. If only because Peter Molyneux's. I know I'd link to <laughs> Peter Molyneux doing some silly bullshit NFT thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sod it. Yeah, I guess 
there is two ways that we can go forward uh, from the topics. Either we can go into an acquisition news or in the blockchain news since yeah, you mentioned. Yeah, go on with the acquisition and then blockchain. Okay. So, of course, <coughs> since it's, uh, you know, it's a, a new week in the games industry, we can't go without uh, an acquisition, right? Mm. <laughs> so, Everybody's yeah, going to be time... angry again. It's Tencent. Yeah, it's Tencent again, and uh, this time they, you know, they bought uh, a big studio. Uh, you know, not not huge, but it's yeah. it's a well known studio that made a lot of uh, you know respected games. Uh, Taltor Block, uh, which is of course known for Back for Blood more recently, but also Left for Dead, also you know. Uh, evolve well that one didn't go too well but uh, actually they also made yeah they also made counter strike source back when they were basically linked with valve so yeah. they made a bunch of games and uh, well again actually uh, you know tying with with what we are saying about microsoft i think uh, with tencent is uh, that uh, it seems like they they got this from the start, from the beginning. They always left their uh, their developers, the companies they bought, to do what uh, they were already doing. You know, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So, uh, well, at least that's been the case so far. I mean, they have acquired uh, many many developers. I mean, I've made a list, and it's you know just to name a few. It's uh, Fancom. Uh, you know, Leiu, which includes Splash Damage and uh, Digital Extremes. Riot, of course, well, that's been uh, yeah, you know, a long time animals, ago. Yeah. 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 Shark Mob, and uh, more recently, Wake Up Interactive, which has uh, Soleil and Valhalla Game Studios, which is the studio. Yeah, and they've, from, they've, got, the they've got small percentages in different companies, which the one people usually make. A massive outrage over is epic. Yeah, but, it's yeah. epic. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, it's also for the, for example, just recently, they've announced investments in uh, Platonic, in uh, you know. Oh yeah, no, and don't not yeah. Starlock, uh, you know, they, they have invested massively. Uh, so basically, you know, uh, you know, at least uh, a few of these companies. Uh, are likely to get uh, some hit games out, right? So since they own uh, stakes, hmm. uh, these companies Tencent tends to profit, I guess. So yeah, it's going to be one of those things. Wait, see what happens. Um, yeah, I've got no issues and... with it uh, at the moment. There's still no issues. I just yeah, <laughs> I've got no issue with what Tencent do. Yeah, yeah as, long they, as long as they're as long as they're letting the developers do their own thing, it's, yeah, it really doesn't change one. Uh, even though I have to say, why wouldn't you let Riot do what they do? I mean, yeah, exactly. What's there to change about them? So, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. About this Total Rock acquisition, uh, the interesting tidbit is also that. Uh, They've said uh, this acquisition will help them uh, grow Back for Blood into a franchise. So I guess we can expect uh, sequels, uh, which, again, uh, you know, maybe uh, it was to be expected because the game did well, uh, but still. Basically, they are seeking, I guess, uh, financial security to be able to, you know, grow their IP. Yeah. So that yeah. makes sense. We'll see about Battle Blood. I just don't know if it's done well enough to justify a sequel. I'm uh, assuming not, but who knows? Well, I think well, I would have. I, I think updating the first game would have been enough, to be honest. Unless yeah. they're really going to change everything about it. But yeah, we will, we will see. I think I think the game was. It would have been fine with just. Updates even in years, mm. but, yeah. but you know, you know well, we, we don't know what the developer wants to do with the with the first yeah. game. It's it's been out for two months, so it's still young. So. I was thinking that maybe uh, you know maybe it won't be a sequel, but maybe it could be a spin-off in the same yeah. uh, like franchise. Mm. That uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We shall see. We shall see. But yeah, I don't really have much to say on that. That yeah, honestly. There is no Chinese conspiracy craze. <laughs> Anybody who thinks there is a stupid. Don't get me wrong, the Chinese government are corrupt as hell and I could rant about their mistreat well, just essentially how they're shoving the Uyghurs in concentration camps and what what they're doing to stamp down Hong Kong, everything along those lines, but you know, that's yeah, that is the Chinese government, but at the same time I don't blame Apple for what the American government does. I don't blame Amazon for what the American government does. So people who start conflating everything and saying, oh, well, Tencent, uh, blah, 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 China does this. It's like, well, yeah, they do. That's not Tencent's <laughs> fault. So well, to, be, to, be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, it's the type of government that is different. And you know how China is. So, yeah, I don't. Uh, I agree with you about going way too overboard. But it's not like it's unlikely that the Chinese government even controls private companies or had, had stakes in them. They, I don't they see it do to have be, some influence. Yeah, so I don't really see that to be so absurd uh, than saying Apple does. Or Apple with the, the uh, with, with the United States government. In China, maybe it 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 could happen. We we don't know, obviously. Yeah, I think it's more. It's the not fact unreasonable. That I I think it's more for me. It's just when people start. In the in reality, yeah, the Chinese government wants all these companies to do well, and if they get fingers, it's it's soft power. They if they can input more pro-China messages in things, then it does help them. That's. What's happening? What's happened with Hollywood for a while now? That's why you get films like The Great Wall with Mark Wahlberg and such as that? They just try to it puts China in a positive light, and the average Chinese person should be put in a positive light. They've done nothing when it comes to the um, companies. Um, what can I say? It. It's. <sighs> It's just stupid. It is. It's all just stupid because China is have no reason to start interfering. To, you know, they they don't care about getting everybody's player account from Riot Games. What? Yeah. What the hell's the Chinese yeah. government? Well, <laughs> shit. Box five thousand played twelve hours last week on League of Legends or whatever it was, and they picked this character. That doesn't fucking help them in the slightest. So, and mm -hmm. then, yeah, especially when it comes to minority, when they don't have the full ownership and everybody says, oh, well, it's Tencent spyware in Epic Games. It's like, oh, shut the fuck up. You're full of shit and you know you are. Yeah, I, I so don't think it's racist. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is stupid. Yeah, the, the Chinese government have got more better ways to spy on us than using yeah. Epic Games and Riot Games or whoever else. I mean, for folks' yeah. sake, you can't. It's, it's, the people who complain are usually Americans anyway. And we found out very quickly that the Americans have been, the CIA have been spying on every fucker in the world. Uh, yeah. 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 Probably. But. Uh... Oh, yeah. But yeah, I've, no, I've got. There's no conspiracy, and people who think there are are morons. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can move on to the, you know, I guess the biggest topic of the day, which is, of course, the Stalker 2 uh, kind of controversy. <laughs> uh, you know, I was get, I got a, a press release um, ahead of the announcement, uh, you know, uh, about the Stalker metaverse and, uh GSC partnering with the market to essentially create a platform where player could trade uh, uh, the rights to unique items in the game. And to be honest, I was skeptical from the get-go. Uh, 
because honestly it didn't make much sense to me and also actually i've uh, had the chance to interview the ceo of uh, gsc and mm. i asked him are you are you sure about this because just you know just last week uh, you know the previous week we've had the ubisoft quartz uh, kind of backlash there was a huge backlash for ubisoft quartz yeah. and he was like no no we are we think that uh, the community will understand, and of course they didn't. And uh, you know, two days later, yesterday, they had to backtrack. Uh, so they are not doing it. They are not doing it anymore, which is of course a positive thing in my mind. But uh, still, <laughs> it is kind of mind-boggling that they thought uh, people would just accept it. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, you know my thoughts. How, how did they think? Yeah, how did they think this was a good idea? I have, I still don't see how every pub, all publishers think this is a good idea. I mean, I, I mean, only people who are going to speculate on these things are all right with the idea. I think I read somewhere, I don't remember when, that Ubisoft is doing something with similar with Rainbow Six Siege, I think. And it's just people, the people that got items and they're now selling them are just people that speculate on the cost, period. And like they, they, they have ridiculous prices up and the highest offers are like so much lower than, I don't know, I don't know how they see this is a good idea. Yeah, well, it, it For wasn't anybody a outside it was people that, Yeah, I really don't. So they, they, they deserve the backlash. Both Ubisoft and the Stalker developer. I mean, maybe they... the Stalker developer more because it's a single player game, so it's even worse. No, that was yeah. what I was say. That, that was my argument when it came to Ubisoft. But even more compressed, it's just like Ubisoft, you buy whatever skin from them, and yeah, in theory, it could go on every Ubisoft game. You do something with Stalker yeah. too, and it can only be in Stalker 2. Fuck off. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. also, you know, the, the first uh, auction that was supposed to take place, you know, it was all about the, basically, the meta-human recreation of yourself, well, if you won the auction, of course, as an NPC in the game. But, I mean, why why do you need the blockchain or NFT for that? You don't. They, they I just don't. jumped yeah. on it, because it's, this, it's just some fad that every fucker jumps on now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been done before that, uh, you know, even uh, fans uh, were recreated in games, and that certainly didn't take uh, blockchain or NFT. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's uh, bullshit. I just... Fuck them. Fuck them. I guess the, the, the big question now is whether this quick reversal, uh, you know, is is enough to save the game's reputation? Uh, you know, maybe, probably, but still, I guess there will be a minority that uh, just doesn't get the game at least at full price, just uh, you know, as well, a principal step. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know exactly what I said when it was in a, when when we, it was announced. Um, essentially, I just said, "Well, I ain't playing that fucking thing." Then no, I'm not. You know, only way I'd be playing it is if I got a review copy. And I don't know if I'm still of that mind. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I, I loved Stalker. I really did love the Stalker games. So I do want to play it, but I suppose, I don't know. I suppose I'm not, the fact that they backtracked, it means I can't do, I can play it without compromising myself. But yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. why? What is it with what is it with the games industry and any single fad which they clearly don't understand? Same as Ubisoft can't do NFTs like that because the whole fucking point of these things is to is decentralization, and all they're doing is essentially trying to create their own little centralized areas for their things. It doesn't work. They don't understand. I mean, NFTs are utter bullshit anyway. But fuck me! Oh, I, I can we just have like a nuclear holocaust, please? Just end it. <laughs> I I recommend not. <laughs> but, uh... 
it would be better. I think I think the humanity is just past now. I think we've done. I don't think we deserve it anymore. Uh, in nuclear all of us, uh, you know, it would also ruin uh, animals, plants, and uh... yeah, yeah, true. In fact, yeah, they're, Omicron, they're no fault. Yeah, you're right. You're perfectly right. Omicron, come on, just take us fucking out. <laughs> I'm starting to think. I'm starting to believe in like Final Fantasy where and Final Fantasy Seven where it, you know the live stream and all that and. Well, any game where it says like the planet is fighting back and just taking out people mm. by whatever, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Like, COVID's just the the way of the pl- bloody earth. Just thinking, you know what? I've had enough of you fuckers. Get off me. Yeah, you know, you know, nature always finds a way, even if man tries to. Fight it's back. never. It's 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 never. Man can. Humanity can do anything. If nature yeah. decides it's done, it's really. Oh dear, <laughs> I'm in a happy mood. <laughs> I'm yeah, but you're not ranting that. You're not ranting that much about this. No, I just think. <laughs> should... Well, I'm gonna say it. They, they, they backtracked, so that's a good thing. That's all I can think. Um, yeah, backtrack. Also, good. there are uh, also there are still. Uh, more than four months before the release, so I guess there is time for most people to, you know, forget diminish about it, their yeah. Don't yeah. forget yeah. about it. Yeah. They'll all, everyone it, 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 was still it. it was still stupid to try doing something yeah, like this. it was. I, I still don't understand how they thought, how somebody thought this was a good idea. They yeah. expected someone to say, yeah, this is, customers to say, yeah, this is a good idea. I don't understand I really, I don't understand how these people think. They just they the don't. They don't. That's the point. From they their fan <laughs> Yeah, but they they detached from what people really want. No, uh, I I think I don't know. Maybe they they saw that other companies are attempting to do this, and they were like, you know, maybe we can make extra bucks on this, but uh, actually not people. because no. they they lose sales on the game. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's impossible to make NFTs and things like that work in the games industry because of how fractured it is. You can't mm. you can't buy a skin and put it in every single game, and that's the whole point of having ownership of something like that to own something that you for yourself and be able to use it where you want. That's at least my yeah. thoughts of it. Yeah. And I yeah. can't see anybody buying Dante from DMC and, I don't know, Activision letting you put the Dante skin in COD. It just ain't going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. For or, fun. yeah. or Nintendo selling rights to their characters. That's never going to happen. Never going to happen. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Never going to happen. <laughs> But yeah, NFTs are bullshit. I've said I've said that so many times. So, um, yeah. Probably for, well, <laughs> probably not bullshit, but um, well, bullies are bullshit. They're they're pricks. Can I, uh, that's a terrible, terrible segue into saying that Bully Two was <laughs> meant to be revealed at the Game Awards and again wasn't. So, yeah. I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I think it was, a, it was a pretty good game. It was fun to play. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Bully was all right. Canis Canami did. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't mind um, Bully, so it's going to be interesting to see. But it's, I suppose it's just one of the few franchises that Rockstar's got. And... Yeah, it's going to be. Let's hope they don't make another GTA Definitive Edition trilogy, though. Not with Bully 2. I was just thinking, just imagine if they make Bully Online, like you can go on <laughs> around bullying people online. Uh, that would that would be fun, but I don't see. Like I, I think I thought we we already said that some time ago. 
I really don't see Bully to to Bully to to be on the same level of stupidity as the first one. Mm. I don't see people taking that very well. Yeah, yeah it's going to be weird to now. see. I do. I mean, the more I think about Rockstar, the more I realize that they've the last. Well, I think the last IP they actually made themselves was Bully. Um, because Red Dead isn't their IP. They, that was purchased when it be, when it obviously was Red Dead Revolver, and mm. then they just made Red Dead Redemption. Uh, Max Payne, obviously they they ended up buying that and creating Max Payne three, mm. and then that's dead. GTA has been around a long time. That's obviously their IP, but again, yeah, you just never. I don't. I I wonder if. I, I wonder if Rockstar are actually capable of creating something new anymore. Or is it just that they're too comfortable in what they do? And everything... Uh, technically, yeah. technically, they also have uh, Rockstar Table Tennis. <laughs> uh, which, yeah. Well, I don't class that as anything fancy because table tennis is a real game, so... <laughs> and also Midnight Club. Then, so, if you remember, that. Midnight Club, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. That's, we're never going to yeah, see yeah. that again. But then again, you have to think of what they've what they've just let die after from their old DMA design days. Lemmings. When are we going to see an open world shooty bang bang lemmings? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't ne- know. never probably. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see lemmings again. Um, Bully, it's one of those. I think they'll it. <sighs> I think it will end up coming, and I mean it's been rumored now for so long, but we'll see. I I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if we saw a bully um remastered before mm-hmm. bully hopefully two not, comes. Hopefully not like the definitive oh, edition. No. Well, yeah. Hopefully not. Maybe they learned their lesson this time. Probably not. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, I, well, at least it would be just one game, so... Yeah, so they can at least... They could yeah. focus on just that, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, well, it's been so long since... It's, so, and it's not playable on any modern uh, console, so it would make yeah. sense. Speaking it's not of... On PC. I don't even know if it ever got released on PC. I think not. Fully did, yeah. It got released on PC, okay. Yeah, yeah, it did. I... Yeah, I'm sure it did. But okay. um, yeah. Other than that, there's not much to say. It's just a rumor. I think it'll come eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, t- talking about rem- remasters and remakes, there is one remake that uh, is official. Sam Fisher is coming back. Ah, but not a remake, is it? It's a brand new game. And Ubisoft just scared me. I'm terrified. They're not making it open world. It's like, have they they got, are they running a fever? Is somebody at Ubisoft, like, ill? (laughs) I mean, I'm glad. uh... It's, that's why it's it's staying uh, linear, because it's a remake of the first one. Is it? Oh, I thought it was a new game. Yeah. Well, they could have done an open world reboot, so it's still an accomplishment. Then. Yeah, true. They're sticking to the original. Yeah, uh, going by the current timeline yeah. of Ubisoft developed project, we may see it sometime in 2030. Beyond mm. Good and Evil. Yeah. Skull and Bones, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Hell, the Prince of Persia remake's been delayed that many, remake. many times. Yeah, it's disappeared now. We 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 don't know anything about it. Is any what the hell's hmm. happening? I don't think so. I you know after the last delay, even rumors leakers yeah. silent. It's weird. So they yeah. probably start. Very they weird. probably started over from scratch. I'd yeah. say. Well, I I, I was uh, quite the fan of. Uh, of Sam Fisher and this shenanigans back in the day, so I'm really happy yeah, that yeah. he's coming back. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's... Uh, I enjoyed it's quite a bit of Splinter Cells. 
especially since Metal Gear Solid is also gone, so at least we have one back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah he has a real chance. Go on, yeah. Temp Fate, Konami will probably release some shite soon. They'll probably get, I don't know, they'll probably get the developers that made GTA Trilogy Remastered, they'll probably get them to make a new Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Yeah, we don't know. We don't, there were some rumors about the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. I, mm, and, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was, I think it was more of a reboot, so things don't look. Yeah, don't, I'm not really hopeful. But yeah. Metal Gear without Kojima is not Metal Gear, period. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see, yeah. We'll see. And yeah, so. Eventually, we come to the very last topic and a, a, another remake. So this one's actually out and not working to what people want it to work to. Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know it's it's a weird one, like you like you often say, because um, of course, Final Fantasy VII remake uh, is a high-profile release, so you 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 think that uh, Square Enix, uh, you know, would invest into it a lot on PC because. Uh, you know, people have been waiting to play it since uh, since it launched on PS4, mm. and uh, yet uh, it kind of uh, dropped out of the blue almost. You know, they announced it uh, at the Game Awards, and then it came came out now just a week later. And uh, you know, it's uh, I mean. I haven't really encountered the major problems when I've played it. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, I've got a top of the line rig, so I can run it pretty well. But uh, I guess the most disappointing thing is, uh, well, first of all, the settings, which is, you know, really disappointing because uh, there's only a handful. of them, you can't even run the game in exclusive full screen, for example. Yeah. Uh, you can't even, uh, you know, uh, it's just uh, very, very limited. And uh, also, when you compare it to what they did with uh, Final Fantasy 15, which uh, I think Francesco here yeah, reviewed on, uh, you know, PC, yeah. and that was uh, really amazing because they added a lot of things. Uh, to that game uh, compared to the console version. Uh, you know, it had uh, lots of uh, video effects. It had uh, optional 4K resolution pack. It also had, uh, you know, eventually they added uh, uh, more stuff uh, the, like DLSS support. So they even added modding tools. And, you know, actually, the game launched with a first-person camera mode, Dolby Atmos support, even a benchmark tool. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was really packed with uh, with yeah. stuff, and it was they you know waiting. PC waiting version. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, this isn't really the case with Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is yeah. weird to say the least. I don't I know don't why. Know if... Maybe. Yeah. If I were to hazard a guess, I think it's more the fact that. They're probably just wanting to get the PC version port out of the way quickly because they're probably busy developing part two. That's yeah. yeah. I think they're doing, they may be doing another DLC though because they're teasing something for Red 13. So mm-hmm. they could be making another DLC. So they probably wanted to rush the port out so that they could make more money or releasing the DLC on more yeah. platforms. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it, it's still, but it's still, yeah, it's still like Alessio said. It's, I'd say it's, it's unac- unacceptable <laughs> because Square Enix even got the money from Epic for the for the exclusivity and yeah, yeah, the six thing months is... to get pretty much the PlayStation Five version that can run at 4K high frame rate and that's it. That's what you get. Yeah, the the thing is actually you know uh, something that I've I said in the article is that they actually, you know, the, the default 
uh, Unreal Engine 4 games. Uh, I have more uh, graphic settings than this one. So, <laughs> I mean, by default, you have more settings in a regular Unreal Engine 4 game. Even, uh, you know, for some reason, this, this Unreal Engine 4 game has less settings than uh, it should have. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. also, yeah, you, you mean with, with the Unreal Engine 4 game, it's really easy to make a, you know, a PC port and even add the stuff like DLSS, FSR, even ray tracing. It's all, uh, it's all there. It's all, uh, you know, integrated kind of in the Unreal Engine. But, uh, you know, for example, with Final Fantasy 15, it was, uh, you know, their own engine, the Luminous engine. So they had to work to add everything and they did. So this time it was easier, and they didn't. So I don't really get them. Yeah, uh, I, I honestly yeah. think it's just laziness. They'll have put a little yeah, small they, team on. They, 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 team they just on the expected top. the game to sell anyway. They expected uh, the game to sell anyway, even uh, without all the requirements for a decent PC port. I honestly they just think for me... It's going, to, it's going to sell, and it's going... Oh, I don't know how much it's going to sell at this point. But. Yeah. I, mean, I think we, for me, it's I, just what I've just said, it's just laziness, and the the COD team is still working on the problem. They'll be working on part two, which the reality is they need to get that out a hell of a lot quicker than they did part one. Yeah, I mean, uh, is it coming out uh, in two years or will it be more? I think yeah. more. They're they're having Final Fantasy sixteen out first. Uh, that's not. I don't good. see. Yeah, well, at least I think they're going to be a little quicker this time around because I think that's... they have a solid framework to work with. I mean, combat is is it. They can they can make additions, but the, I think I don't think combat is going to change much. They're probably going to have some issues with open world if they go open world because if they don't, I don't think people will love will like. Them. I think the power for me, they need to. They need to make it linking together because if if they don't carry over your saves from part one and your you know your levels and all your gear, I'm going to be, I personally will be pissed off. Yeah, unless they pull a Kingdom Hearts thing that every new game. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten all of these abilities. Yeah, but that wouldn't work. They're in going Final to do Fantasy. that. That wouldn't work in part two of Final Fantasy where you where you've just got out of Midgard and suddenly you're just like oh I I. I yeah, I, I'm. I've, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just outside this big city. Letters just. You know. Just, yeah. I'm going. I'm going to. Say, yeah. Spoilers, but not really spoilers. After the little, let's say after the final battle, they're going to say, "Oh, the journey there took all of our abilities away." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you know, they're going to do that. It's Nomura. They're going to do that. But again, <laughs> they can't. They can't do that because. The materia, your equipment. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe you yeah, forget you, you how know. to use your. Oh. Chris, you, you uh, know, you know, I can't. I don't know. I can't say more, but I would elaborate more because I don't want to spoil. If Alexia is going to finish it, I don't know. I don't want to spoil that. Oh yeah, well. I'm you know, they, they can do that. So many stupid things with that ending they've done, which I liked it to be honest. But they yeah. can do so many stupid things with that. Yeah. So they're going to forget all the abilities, and you you will start again at level one with your basic fire material, braver limit break break for cloud, and that's it. Work your way back up. <laughs> you know, I guess one of the things that uh, I've noticed while playing, uh, um, of course, I knew it, but uh, still, uh, you know, where they uh, kind of. Uh, block your path uh, you can't even basically jump <laughs> you know in the game you yeah. can it's still very very old uh, in that regard and uh, yeah you know you know i uh, i think I, I talked with somebody about this and it's pretty much final fantasy uh, final fantasy 13 the first half of the game is like a corridor you just go from point a to point b and you can't really go anywhere you want yeah. And it's pretty close to that. Even combat, the customiz- customization really reminds me of Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah, yeah. And they need to open it up in Part Two because they really can't do a linear game again unless yeah, they change the... things to you know, unless they really change things 
events that are going to happen, they really can't do that a linear game. Yeah, it's going to be awkward making the... You can make Midgar linear, which is fair enough. It is possible, and they've managed it, and they've done a decent job, but anybody who knows the original Final Fantasy, and you've got so yeah. many options on what you can do after the fact. I mean, even the side elements, like Fort Condor, it's like, how, yeah, how are they going to put all that in? Well, they already did Fort Condor with the DLC, with Intermission. It's a mini game you play... It's like it's it's like a board game you play with characters yeah. in me. I know, but I just want I want I want to visit Fort Condor. Don't want to. I I want to do it as I did it before, and then of Costa yeah. del Sol. Like, are they going to have that house you can buy in the original for how many million gil was it? Nah, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. Well, I think a lot, of, a lot of the optional stuff is getting cut. To be honest, I mean, maybe not really cut, but reworked into a more linear, linear fashion. Uh, I'm, uh, well, we already had Yuffie with the DLC, so they're not going to be optional anymore, and it's already. Oh yeah, yeah, they're not going to have that. Change. Where you, where you have to walk around that those woods to find Yuffie, yeah. Yeah, that, um. that, that, that you're probably going to get an event that happens. But it's not going to happen randomly anymore. Uh, Even though I still don't understand why Vincent was optional, to be honest, it's yet. Quite a history with the other characters, Mm. with Sephiroth too. So I don't know why that was optional. So they can probably fix that now. You know, the thing is, uh, as you mentioned, that the the next one will have to be open world, but. uh, it's not like uh, Square Enix's uh, open world games uh, have exactly been shining, you know. Uh, mm. Especially, I mean, if we if we take into account Final Fantasy, uh, you know, fifteen, the open world was uh, kind of so and so, uh, and also, yeah. you know, the previews for you know for for Spoken have kind of. Uh, uh, into the same, uh, which is kind of the open world is empty, uh, which that game has a story reason for it. But still, uh, can can they make uh, an open world game that is uh, on the level of uh, The Witcher Three? I don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they, no into, they I, I, can, I can't think of a Japanese. I can't think of a Japanese open world game that's on that level. On, yeah. on, not, not even that level. On a decent level. Because, you know, I still don't think they got it down well, when it comes to role-playing games or action games. Yeah. They, I don't think they got that down. I mean, don't get me yet. wrong. You can get some good open-world Japanese JRPGs. Um, Dragon Quest oh, does it well. To a good me... Yeah, yeah, true. So it's, it's probably the, the only one. They are, think yeah, they are different types of open-worlds and everything, though. I think that's always the thing to remember. But we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I think maybe maybe Xenoblade Chronicles had one of the open world games. You know, uh, I think. Yeah, but, it, yeah, but it, it feels more like an MMO, to be honest. Mm. You know, okay. it's big. Uh, it's big. It's great to look at, but all you get are quests. Please bring me yeah. five spells. Please bring me five that. And, to be yeah. fair, that was. Yeah, like... In the end, in the end. In the end, you just go. You just go straight for the story quest. At least that's what I do. Yeah, I try to, to fair, do the though, quest. I and... think the original Witcher was very much like that, an MMO, but what single player? <laughs> the CD yeah, project well... did finally refine it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. strong. It's, uh, uh... Yeah, no, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, Square should have done better with the port, but. I think at most Japanese games, you tend to find that the ports are a bit shit. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, you know, on average, they are perhaps improving compared to a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they still got a ways to go. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, yeah. Uh, I'm not actually playing anything either, so for that topic, I'm literally going to be silent. I am not playing anything. I've just been, I've been so busy and then yesterday i just had my jab and then i just sleep and i'm gonna to sleep today as soon as we do mm. as soon as we've done this i'm like gonna lay down and be like uh oh, sweet release of death okay <laughs> so we'll be quick i guess uh, francesco yeah. i think has played well, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, we talked about GTFO last week, and it's pretty, my opinion is pretty much unchanged yeah. from the the little the, the more I played for the review. It's it I, I, like I said, I think much of the games popular much of the game popularity will depend on how much they're going to support it from now on. Yeah. Because, you know, the mission, even though the missions do have some randomized elements, the objectives are always the same. So it makes a little difference, but not that much. So that just depends on how much they're going yeah. to, to support the game, if they are. Right. Because they wrote the, they wrote the roadmap they have on the website just stops at the 1.0 release. So... Uh, we don't know. Do they, is there any kind of a procedural generation for the maps? For just, the... No, the maps are always the same. It's just you get uh, the enemy placement changes and some items change. That's it. The maps are yeah. always the same. They don't change. I think for this kind of uh, four-person cooperative games, uh, going forward, especially procedural generation, will be a must because otherwise... You can't really produce as much content as the yeah, the, yeah the, because uh, yeah that that was that's what I was thinking. So if 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 this is their game and they're done with it, I don't think people are going to play it for much longer. Yeah. To be honest, it's you know it's competent and it's fun when it works. But if you don't give people more, I mean cosmetics, yeah, they're all right, but you don't really get much sense of progression. And they're there. You get them randomly after you win a, after you complete a mission. So it's not much. I mean, once you've done the missions that are available, I don't think you have much reason to to play mm -hmm. it, to play to continue playing it. It's like unlike, for example, Back for Blood that we talked about earlier. You have mm -hmm. way more reason to play that game over and over and over. You have multiple difficulty levels. You have so many weapon choices. GTA 4 is way more limited. Than, Pretty much every aspect. Okay. How about you, Alessio? Apart from New World. Uh, well, actually, I've uh, <laughs> I've begun switching uh, away from away from New World, and uh, like uh, I think I've uh, I've said the last time, you know, back to Elder Scrolls Online. So, yeah, we are settling back, uh, you know. Uh, we've bought the new expansion, so and uh, you know the the interesting thing of uh, this expansion is that uh, they've added uh, companion NPCs for the first time. Mm -hmm. So you basically you basically recruit them, uh, and uh, there is a quest, of course, to recruit them, and then you can uh, you can bring them almost everywhere except PvP. You can even bring them in dungeons and trials uh, raids, but uh, you know when you do, they basically take up a spot of uh, the spot of another player. So you can only really bring them if you are one man short, so yeah. to speak. But uh, you know, in that case, they can be helpful, and uh, you know, uh, you can also upgrade them, of course, with the new skills, new equipment. And, uh, you know, there is, a, of course, like in the single-player games, there is a report system, so they basically uh, have things that um, they like or dislike you doing. For example, there is one who is, uh, you know, honorable, and uh, it doesn't really like if you steal if, or if you kill innocents, which, of course, you can do in other scrolls online. And uh, so your relationship, your relationship basically goes down if you do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. while well, uh, you know the other companion is is uh, on the on the other end more uh, forgiving in that regard. She's a dark elf and she's uh, you know, more carefree. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it's always a great game, and also coming back from New World. Uh, you know the the quest writing and overall quest design is just on another level. But to be fair, it's not just a close online. I'd say almost every 
major MMO is has better PVE or at least better quests than yeah. New World, which is of course because New World wasn't really meant to be a PVE game until uh, like a year and a half ago. Uh, it was a full loot sandbox PVP game with some survival elements. You know when you tried it as well at those press events, and uh, you know then they tried to add the all this PVE stuff, uh, but of course they didn't have enough time uh, to do that in a, a proper way. And uh, I think it's kind of stuck. Perhaps the game is a bit uh, in a weird spot where basically uh, it's not really for hardcore PVPers uh, because they they'd rather want to have uh, you know uh, a sandbox more sandbox structure, full loot. And it's also not for PVEers because uh, PVEers have uh, much better games, honestly, uh, Elder Scrolls or Final Fantasy fourteen or even World of Warcraft, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings Online. I mean, all these have uh, superior PVE, I'd say. So, well, that is not to say, of course, there are some things that uh, New World does differently that are interesting. And uh, I think, uh, of course, there is room to grow. Uh, there is potential, uh, but, uh, you know. Wait and see uh, sort of thing. Yeah, because, of course, well, I guess if you look at the player base, it's it's uh, the writing goes, is on the wall because, like I said, it basically uh, diminished by nine tenth. So it's uh, uh, you know people have uh, bought into the game. They've had their fun. Uh, now, of course, they are uh, they've left mostly because the what was there, especially the end game, wasn't very interesting. But you know, even uh, Elder Scrolls Online. And to a much bigger extent, Final Fantasy XIV, they didn't really uh, have a great launch. You know, Final Fantasy XIV yeah. had to be taken down, as we yeah. all know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had to basically remake it. So with with games like this, uh, it's always uh, the... Uh, I guess maybe post-launch is almost more important than what yeah. happened pre-launch. So... Uh, they can they can still turn it around. I guess they have to decide if they want to go deeper into PVE or not. So they guess they need to decide what their game is going to be about. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an MMO. Things can change, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. As I've said, I'm not playing anything at the moment. Um. Nothing I can talk about anyway. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> Are you not playing a football manager anymore? Uh, just... when, in little bits and bats when I get the chance, it's more... Uh, to be fair, I've just been so busy this past week that other than what little time I get to play certain things, it's just, yeah, it's that time of the year, isn't it? You don't get time. It's that time of the year and... I'll probably get more chance next week when, or whenever, when the UK probably goes back into bloody lockdown. Which is, I think it's coming, but that's politics, so we'll not worry about that today. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... I'd say that's... Yeah. Yeah. That's everything. Yeah, I think that's everything from me. Are you, uh, yeah? Yeah. Well, on that note, then, we will be... Oh, no, we probably won't be doing... I don't... I... Will we be doing next week with it being Christmas? Just after Christmas? <laughs> I don't know, probably. I don't know. Play it by ear. Yeah, if... probably. We can skip it to a couple of days later, then. maybe. We'll have yeah. a look. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, if we see you next week, then fair enough. If we don't see you next week, then fair enough. We'll see you sometime. See you all later. Um, yeah. Well, well, well if, we, if we don't see you, best wishes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Bye. Bye. Bye.